Hello, this is Dr. Ann Dabra Woods, the Chief Nurse of Walters Clore Health Learning Research and Practice, and this is from the desk of the Chief Nurse. Today we're going to be talking about two macro trends in nursing, decreasing care variability to improve patient outcomes, as well as how technology is changing how we access and use evidence in our practice. So joining me here today is Colette Hendler, and Colette is the Editor-in-Chief of Lippincott Solutions Point of Care Products, so thank you for joining me here today, Colette. Sure. So today we want to talk a little bit about variability of care. So can you just give us a quick definition of what variability care is all about and why it's such a problem? Well, when you have different people doing different things with patients, then it can have outcomes that are not what you want them to be. Um, if everybody's on the same page using evidence-based practice, then you're using the latest research, you're using the latest best practices and expert opinion to deliver the best care for the patients. Right, you know, that really makes a lot of sense because when you look at the fact that sometimes in a hospital, different units are doing different things for the same patients who have the same diagnosis versus hospital to hospital, even in the same town can give different outcomes. So really this whole concept of variability of care and really standardizing procedures um, and knowledge base is so important. So we decrease that variability care and really help to improve our patient outcomes. Now, everything that we do is really based on evidence. And today we have a, new, a newer definition about evidence-based practice. Can you just review with us what that is? So evidence-based practice is really taking evidence that is from the research, the latest research, clinical expertise, and also incorporating patient preference into the realm of care. Right. So, you know, you and I have a lot of experience in nursing, but you take our experience versus someone who's just new to practice. Certainly, we could have slightly different outcomes just because of the expertise we bring to the table. Um, and that's why having standardization of care is so important so that doesn't happen as much as it currently does. I think the other thing is asking the patient what they want, right? So, you know, what is their definition of quality care to them really makes a difference. Right, because we're all individuals and we all have different aspects that we expect in our care. Absolutely. So one of the things that we have found that's really important is that, you know, as nurses, we tend to stay in our own silo. And that's what's really important to us is that we have access to not only the information in nursing, but medicine, as well as allied health information as well. Because, you know, we get a patient up to walk after they fractured their hip, you know, we're not going to find that information in our nursing literature or medicine literature, but we're going to find it in our physical therapy literature, right? Right. And we can all collaborate as a team and find information that's pertinent to what we do from the other healthcare professionals on our team and their research. That's right. So how does evidence and practice really change healthcare? What does it actually do? Well, it gives you the best solution to the patient's problems. Um, and we're not just doing things then just because we've always done them that way. We're doing them based on science and the evidence of doing things over the years um, as far as the research goes and backs it up. Right, right. So it's really been shown to increase quality care, decrease that care variability, improve those patient outcomes. What I find is fascinating is that hospitals that use evidence in their practice, they have more satisfied staff. They feel the staff feels that they're more empowered and that the organization really cares about them. Have you found that in your experience as well? Yes, I have. Um, I think that when they're involved in the evidence, in gathering the evidence, they feel like they're really participating in their field and making a difference in the care and the outcomes of their patients. Yep, absolutely agree with you. And I think that takes us down to the next trend, which is the fact that we have all this technology that we didn't have 20 years ago, and it really is changing how we access that information, where we are with our patients or within our workflow. So one of the things that research has shown us is that on average, people have three different devices, right? So they've got their mm -hmm. smartphone, they've got their tablet device, and they usually have a laptop or a computer. And what we know is the more the devices they have, the more time they spend online looking up information. So when we look at our healthcare environment today, it's really, really changed. We have all this technology, and sometimes it's hard to not get lost in the technology and remember that we have a patient in the bed. 
but we really have to go back and look at you know, the different scenarios with how we access information. So one of those places is point of care. So talk to me a little bit about what point of care is. Point of care is when you need to, when you're caring for a patient and you need quick access to information. Information that's presented in bulleted format that's easy for you to take a look at when you're caring for the patient, when you need information very quickly. And certainly having that clinical decision support information embedded in workflow mm -hmm. is so important. I think you and I will both agree that if it's not embedded within a, a nurse's workflow, they're simply not going to use it because they don't have time to go look for that information. So having that clinical decision support at point of care really helps to um, standardize that care and really decrease that variability. And there is quite a bit of research that shows if we have the right tools in place, we can decrease you know, our urinary tract infection rate and our, our line infection rate. It really can really make a difference in the care we're delivering. And our electronic healthcare records can help us make sure we get that information embedded right within the clinician's workflow. It's so important. Now, sometimes, we have a little bit more time to look up information and go to a journal or um, you know, go out to a, a web service and look up information. And we call that point of reference. So I know you've had some experience with quality improvement. Um, talk to me a little bit about that type of information. What makes it different than point of care information? Well, the point of reference information is when you have a little more time and you really want to delve into something a little bit further. You know, that information you get at point of reference is going to help inform your practice, but it's not going to help you make a deci decision right there and then when you're with a patient because it's written differently. You're talking about articles versus something that's just bulleted. Right. So we also have this whole concept called point of learning and point of learning in practice, which is really all about professional development and getting our CE credit. So talk to me a little bit about that and, and the types of information we find with the, that type of um, experience. Well, point of learning is really a lifelong process. Um, as a nurse or any healthcare professional, you have to keep in tune with the trends, what's going on. You have to grow yourself. Um, Many people go on for advanced degrees. That mm -hmm. would be more of the point of learning and practices, continuing to grow your practice as you go on professionally. Right, so those those um, courses that you would take at po a point of learning for practice are going to be much longer. So they could be, you know, an article that you read from a journal that has continuing education credit, might be an interactive course, it might be going to a conference. So again, very different information than w what you would get when you're right there with your patient at point of care. But then we have this other piece of point of learning um, called point of learning in academia. So you and I both work with students and you know they come from a whole different level where they don't have that background knowledge. So talk to me a little bit about some of the resources that would be available for them at point of learning for education or academia. Well, on point of learning for education, there are um, modules that you could look at electronically. Um, I think that one of the most important things for learners is that you need a big variety of tools um, based on different people's learning styles. Absolutely, and you know, students still use textbooks, but we're starting to see that some of them are starting to get away from that and doing more interactive courses. You know, simulation is huge right now. Mm -hmm. So working in a sim lab or doing virtual simulation seems to really help them in their educational process. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do. And I think when you have hands on and it's in a sim lab where you know you're not going to hurt anyone, mm -hmm. it really reinforces the learning. So I think the whole goal um, you know, that we've learned about here is sort of the macro trends is certainly having the right information when and where you need it is so vitally important. And the information we had at, have at point of care is when you need information very quickly within 30 seconds to a few minutes, where the other instances you have a little bit more time. But regardless, we need all of them to really improve care and decrease that care variability. So thanks very much for being with me here today, Colette. And you know, I think that what we've shown is that having information in different formats at the right place, so whether it be point of, of care when you're right making a decision with the patient, to point of learning, to point of reference, the information's different, but it's all needed. And we need all of that information 
um, so that we can really improve patient care and decrease that variability of care and improve our patient outcomes. So this is Dr. Ann Woods from the desk of the chief nurse. Thank you.